Welcome to my guide to trying to set up Jagged Alliance 2 for a pleasant experience. Ignore that thing on the top left. That's not relevant. This is going to be a pretty free form. I'm going to just wing it and we'll see what happens, all right? So uh, this is built on the assumption that you've been following my guide on how to set up Jagged Alliance 2 for a modern uh, computer doesn't want to run on, on Windows 10 or probably even Windows 7 rather nicely without uh, some tweaks and uh, there's gonna be a link somewhere where you can find it probably like there and around you know um unfortunately one of the things with the version 1.13 that you're gonna be installing via this guide uh there's some changes to the character creation process uh that cannot be reverted and starting the game is a bit less sensible than it initially was um and that can cause extra confusion and the game is rather difficult as it is even on easy settings so i thought uh, with a few of my friends who've seen me streamed recently uh being interested in, in trying it out and i've seen them struggle thought that i, I should set up a guide or how to get into the game because there is a lot about it that is quite hostile for the modern gamer uh, but yeah uh, set up the game you'll get this thing here make sure you don't uh, use too high a resolution because all the, the UI elements uh, none of them really scale at all and the text is gonna be really small if you use like full HD or something like that it's, it was made in 99 and the modern engine or the mo modern ish engine update they made for it uh, it hasn't fixed all these issues so just make sure that you don't set it to higher than 720p and you should be pretty good at least for me uh, we're gonna fire up the game and then i'm gonna switch up my capture card for the correct resolution ah there we go and so we get here right Jagged Alliance 2 version 1.13. If it doesn't say that there, you're you're not running the correct thing, and uh, this guide doesn't apply. Uh, preferences, there are a few things that you should check here. Um, mostly, let me just check. There is... Force turn mode. This is something that you might want to consider. Um, the game is turn-based when in combat but if you have uh, is it two three turns without combat of any like without seeing any enemy activity game turns into real-time mode and uh the the unfortunate uh, sort of consequence of that is that ai is going to immediately react and your guys are not because you don't just just react as fast as the ai so the ai is going to get an upper hand on, on those situations and that is going to make the the gameplay a lot more slowly and it can be annoying at times but that could help with those situations there's a bunch of other things um that uh, can make the game more or less pleasant for you but I, I suggest you just check out them and hover over them as you feel them important but yeah let's uh let's just start a new game Make sure you pick novice difficulty uh it's default to to have a one imp character that's gonna the obvious what it is in the future uh i'm gonna recommend you use the old skill traits tons of guns options uh what else these no need to touch uh i boost these bobby ray quality and quantity a little bit so there's a there's this store where you can buy equipment and uh, if you the the quality to be uh or and quality and quantity be uh, set too low you're gonna have a difficult time getting good equipment uh the improved interrupt system is probably the only thing out of the the new updates that i'm gonna suggest everyone enable because it, it really feels a lot better than the original uh if you're if you're really new to this this type of games enemies drop all items is it's sort of cheaty to the way like the game originally worked uh enemies drop randomly like maybe a bit of their ammo maybe maybe a gun here and there maybe a piece of their armor but not all the things they had so 
so you wouldn't get quite as much stuff out of the enemies. But for the first experience, I'm gonna recommend that you put it on, because otherwise the game can really be quite difficult. Uh, this is something that gets uh, a lot of people the, the sci-fi versus realistic. Um, the default is sci-fi, which I think the only difference, like, I, I don't even know this for sure, but I think what it does, the only difference is it adds uh, incredibly, well, not incredibly difficult, but pretty difficult extra content to the game which I don't think fits with the story, personally. I don't like it at all, and I don't like the, the sort of difficulty involved with it. Uh, so I'm gonna uh, recommend you put it on realistic, unless you want to experience the full content of the game. You could maybe play it first at realistic, and if you like the game, maybe try out uh, the sci-fi and see what's new. I'm gonna try and avoid spoiling too much of that. Uh, the rest of the stuff, just leave it on default. Uh, go go start the game with the warnings and one thing you should uh, pay attention this is sort of uh, uh, a minor part of the game the laptop view there you can have your notification icons you can access your email there web browser there files history all the last stuff here make sure you read your email so for example this email gets ignored easily by new players it's incredibly important it has a secret activation code XCP624, always the same thing, uh, that allows you to uh, create your own character. So, there's other stuff here that is uh, more or less important. Some of it is just backstory, some of it is more, more important, and you're gonna get more email over the course of the game. You should really read it. It's gonna open up the story a bit more, and it can tell you really important details. Similarly, check the files. There's some recon about the place. It's going to tell you about the story and things you should uh, look out for. Uh, then we go to IMP, Institute for Mercenary Profiling. We type in the XCP624 activation code. This is the, the part that has been changed a little bit by by the, um, the, um, and the mod in, in ways that I'm not super happy about you just type in some stuff that you like pick your appearance i always pick this guy don't know why and this voice don't know why you just pick what you like uh there are some differences here about big body and this was uh alternative rifle holding i don't even remember what that means but it's either big or normal pick this first because it sometimes changes some of these other things you pick your skin color hair color uh clothing whatever you like fine then this this is the bit that that just got destroyed. This used to be a questionnaire, and I, like based on that, it uh, used to to like uh, pick your your character's traits and things. And you could just pick if you're normal or arrogant or whatever. I'm gonna recommend that you just choose normal and no disability because otherwise it's an extra difficulty thing for you to worry about. Uh, similarly, the um, uh, prejudices. Just, just leave them on defaults. Skills. Um, this is definitely up to you. So you can uh, pick either one point or two points in most of these and become an expert. Uh, lock picking is definitely useful. Hand to hand can be useful. Electronics, all these things can be really useful. Um, personally, I like to go stealth and night ops, but that's just me. It's perfectly fine to put, for example, a uh, sniping expert, or camouflage and sniper, or martial arts and hand-to-hand. -hand. Whatever feels good to you. Th there really are no good or bad choices here. It just affects how your personal uh, character works out. Then you go to... This is a bad bit about the UI. It's, it's, it, uh, this wasn't the original also. It sort of unlocks the next thing, but all the other ones just like, they're there. So you end up accidentally clicking those and redoing the steps. Um, this is how you sort of build your character's um, attributes and skills that affect the, your combat abilities and other, other abilities overall. What I usually do is I max out health. You can click here or click these. Sometimes it's a little bit iffy how it works. I max out agility, wisdom, and marksmanship. 
and then you get a bunch of points. Uh, don't tweak this too much unless you know what you're doing. It can affect things uh, that you don't want to affect. It's fine to start on level one. It, it's it's just fine. And uh, health affects basically your hit points. How how easy it is for you to get killed. Dexterity affects things like lock picking, a bunch of other stuff. Agility is. Uh, the most important thing, uh, I, I believe, with health, that affects uh, your action points, which is, in a turn-based uh, strategy game, really important. Strength is basically how much you can carry and how hard you hit. If you try to pry open containers or something like that with a crowbar, it affects that. Uh, stuff like that. It's not necessary, but it's definitely useful. <laughs> Leadership, uh, mainly for training and uh, getting respect out of some people. Explosives. Wait, I skipped something, didn't I? Wisdom uh, affects how how easily you learn new things. I believe that is the only thing it really does. Uh, marksmanship, obviously accuracy when shooting with weapons. Explosives, well, how well do you deal with explosives? You can have these last three things, explosive, medical, and mechanical. You can set them to zero, which gives you 15 extra bonus points. But you cannot do anything in that skill area. So if you have no explosive skills, you can literally do nothing. I don't think you can even throw a grenade at that point without blowing yourself up. Similarly, medical, you can't perform the basic first aid. You have zero. Mechanical, if your gun jams, you cannot even unjam it, I believe. So, at like, I would recommend that you set them at least the minimum 35, unless you really know what you're doing. Uh, I usually boost leadership at least to like 60-ish, maybe 65, just because uh, it's easier for me to remember that my main character is a guy who can do a lot of the talking to important characters in-game, and uh, then I pick usually one of these that he's okay at, so let's, let's put a bit of point to strength, maybe something to dexterity so he's not completely useless in these areas. And then put everything else to explosives, maybe. That's fine. And then we're done. Are you authorized? Payment of 3,000. It's fine, you get 45,000. Don't worry about it. You got new mail. That's about the results of this. Explains to you what kind of character you just built, but since you mostly picked it out of the options, it, it doesn't really tell you a lot new, uh, unfortunately, in this version. Now you go here, click again for bookmarks, you go to AIM, right? This is where you hire your other mercenaries. Make sure you go to two links and uh, open the, the other things. Bobby Ray's, it's not active yet, but it will be important in the future. And the other things, if you decide to use them, they can be useful. But I'm not gonna go too deeply into those. You go to here, AIM members. You, uh, I usually choose by price and go with the cheapest guys. But for the, the purposes of this guide, I'm going to recommend you pick Marksmanship instead. And it's now in descending order, so the top person is the best Marksman. Uh, you're going to try to pick three people who you can afford for two weeks each, including their medical and optional gear. If you don't buy their optional gear, they come with no armor, no weapons, nothing. You're going to have to punch your way through, which is going to be hard because you're going to be shot at. Uh, medical deposit you cannot go around uh, unless you hire a person you uh, that doesn't require that uh, and one thing that I do recommend you try to keep as a thing uh, try to hire someone with at least a reasonable explosive skill someone with a reasonable medical skill and someone with a reasonable mechanical skill preferably someone with a lockpick kit um, unless your um, your main character is uh, able to fulfill one of those roles. So we're gonna pick these people are just way too expensive. No way 18,000 too expensive we're Gonna aim for steroid here is is one of my favorites uh, 89 marksmanship 76 mechanical fills at least a couple of my requirements already locksmith kit there and uh, He's cheap two weeks for, uh, for 8,000. This is steroid Gantaski speaking so we're gonna hire him Two How weeks. Long you we're gonna buy the equipment. That's total ten thousand. We got thirty thousand it left. Agreement. It's fine. Don't worry about saving the money as long as you get these guys for like two weeks. Next up, uh, not this guy. Hitman, eighty-eight marksmanship, really good. Explosives, thirty-nine. It's not great, but it's okay. Uh, 
Other skills. Uh, mediocre. Let's see. Ice, 15,000. Buns, 86 marksmanship. Medical, 48. First aid kit. This is important to get someone with a first aid kit. Without one of those, you're gonna get murderized. I think I'm gonna hire Buns. Two weeks by equipment. That was had a medical deficit also. You're gonna get that money back if you... Uh, what's the word? Well, if you fire them, basically. There's a... a word for dismiss or something is, is the option in the game. And this person would be a good explosives guy. 16,000 for two weeks. Functionship 85. Uh, sounds pretty good to me. Hello, Fidel is in appliance. How Two weeks. long? My equipment. So what I usually do personally, this is what I'm going to recommend that you do is, is go through these, find your, your picks who you like. Not all of the options are always going to be available, so it's going to vary. But what I do personally is I go by price and then I go pop, 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 pop. The, the four cheapest guys and usually I hire Meltdown on top or maybe Steroid. Someone with a little bit better accuracy that, or marksmanship than these four guys. These guys fulfill all your basic needs, uh, but they're really shit at the start. So Bull is very strong. He can he can pry open doors. He can punch people out. Uh, MD, well, is a uh, is a medical doctor. He can fix you up. Can't shoot for shit, but uh, he doesn't have to at the start. Uh, he'll get better over time. Igor uh, will become a really good shot eventually. Uh, at the start, he's just an okay one. Barry is an explosives guy and can do, do some lock picking. So these guys can do your things, but they are going to be really difficult to play with at the start. That's why I usually pick someone like Meltdown to go with them, who's a little bit more experienced, has decent marksmanship, and but she's also still still not great. She's just pretty good for the price. So, now we've got a full team. Uh, we've got pretty much all the things we need. Uh, you can identify some more more interesting things about here so steroid is a big shot into electronics and lock or has the skills for electronics and lock picking Bonds is a teaching expert uh fierce insects fidel is psychotic aggressive uh, knows uh, a lot about hand-to-hand -hand and auto weapons and you know things like that you can see their inventory details and things like that here so now you shut down that laptop you get here you're gonna uh, be uh, weirded out on this screen. Okay, what is going on? All you need to really worry about is that this square is where you're gonna land up. Uh, land once you start the game. And right now it's all paused. Nothing is happening. So you start up the game. Uh, either you click here. I think if you click here or... I think those are two things you can do. What I usually do is just click here. Time. That's how you uh, control what is called time compression in this game. So how how you're basically waiting for things to happen. We're just waiting for our guys to arrive at the scene. Don't look like we were spotted coming in. Now we gotta find this Miguel guy. Now you usually want to memorize the keyboard combination. You press plus Z C. So the key plus once the helicopter is gone. Peoples of evil plus yeah. ZC. So, plus selects all, Z toggles them into stealth mode, and C puts them into crouching. Then you move the guys in this building here, or in that building, and you're gonna put your guys in positions, and you're already getting shot. That's nice. Uh, steroid, any chance you can kill this guy? Thanks. So what I did there uh, was, was a bit sped up from my original plan but all right so i'm gonna walk you through that so when you see an enemy they show up here um there's a count there at how many enemies each one of your characters can see uh you can click on that i think to cycle to uh the map uh, showing them you can use arrow keys to to move around or i believe you move the the mouse to the edges sort of works but that's clumsy nowadays especially on on uh, windowed mode and things like that um but yeah so then when you have a weapon at hand you right click to toggle targeting mode 
And when you have a valid target, let's say, uh, well, we don't have a valid target right now, but if we had a valid target, you can continue right-clicking on that target to, to change the amount of action points you spend on them, and then you left-click to actually fire the gun. So right now, because Steroid is hurt, we're going to take him out of stealth and uh, move him there. We already blew yes. our power anyway. Uh, I toggled buns out of stealth. That's why the name isn't yellow anymore. So Z and then pressed R for, to make her run. And uh, we're going to make her run here. So managing these modes, uh, run, uh, crouch, uh, stand, uh, go prone, these things and stealth are going to be a key to success in the game. But uh, you can do them via here, or you can press H for your help and find out how all the hotkeys work. There's quite a many, quite a lot of them, so you don't need to really try to memorize them at the very start. But it's gonna help you do. So this is now our weapon is the first aid kit. So we right click to shoot steroid with the first aid kit, or use the first aid kit on steroid, so steroid won't bleed out. Gladly, Steroid has a lot of health, so he lost 50 health there, but he's still Standing alive. Um, so, Leiter is here. Now, one thing that's going to be a bit weird is that every action, including change, changing stands or looking around, is going to cost you AP. So, you've got 24 action points here for my Leiter character. If I'm going to look this way, it's going to cost me two action points. If I'm going to change my stands, stand, uh, stands up, all stance changes uh, cost 2 AP from one to the next, and if you change from standing to prone, that's going to be 4. Uh, it costs different amounts of action points to turn in different stances, so when standing up it's 1, when crouching it's 2, and when prone it's 6. Because actually when you go are prone, it's going to crouch, then turn, then go back prone. Um, so that's 2 plus 2 plus 2. That works. So, but one thing that is a bit weird is that drawing your weapon also takes an action point. So if I am now re want to be ready to face an enemy coming from this direction, because I'm already facing that direction, no notice how the number 1 turns uh, red. Maybe you can see it, maybe you can't, but it does, and then, then that means that you're going to draw your weapon. So if you click that, uh, now you see the character, their weapon drawn out. Uh, look can be, if you left click this here, you can activate it like that, or I just do it sort of instinctively with the, the key L. And we got Fidel here by. still. I'm going to move him out here. Bye, guys. And, oh, hello. We got two people here. Uh, we're going to put Fidel down to avoid getting shot at quite as easily. I think he can shoot this guy. All right. All right. I, I was supposed to do how the targeting works a bit more in detail. Can do it. Standing yeah. by. So, all right. So see, we're we're hovering over the guy. It's it shows this targeting reticle. You can target the head, torso, or legs. If it's uh, anything but red, it's probably going to be a difficult shot. It's either out of the, the weapon's effective range, or you just can't see properly. Uh, try not to target the head if you're far away and don't have, like, a sniper rifle. It's gonna miss, 99% sure. Uh, target the torso, and when you right-click, see how the, the, the reticle gets smaller? That's more aiming, and then the number inside is gonna tell you how many action points it is going to take to make a shot. So there we go. At 4 AP, it's sort of like a quick whip that, to that direction, then you squeeze the trigger, the, the bullets fly wherever, and, and you'll never hit. But if you want to actually make a difference, make sure you go at the full level. And there, two shots, dead. He's good. Uh, this guy's marksmanship is 85, which is decent, but it's not great, and he can shoot just fine at this range. There are other modifiers that can affect this. There's uh, things like, let's say, yes. Buns has... Uh, sun goggles that are gonna help her in when it's bright outside if you're if you have a rifle and it has a bipod that's gonna Im improve the the accuracy similarly scopes laser sights a lot of modifications on your weapons uh, you can if you right click on things you can get more information and you get this this thing for for combining things let's say here we got C1 with some uh, detonator things you can combine these clips by like sort of merging them with this interface 
there's a lot of things you can do with this. Experiment with it, and and you'll find stuff. Right. Standing by. Now that I know that uh, there was one guy here that shot steroid, then there was one guy here and one ran off this way. Now we don't see them because they're out of our field of vision, but I believe uh, I, I know off the top Understood. of my head that this level only has three guys to start with. So what I'm gonna have yeah. to do is I'm gonna have steroid just pull out his weapon point that way in case the guy decides to try to uh flank him yeah. or flank us there standing I'm by. gonna have Leah to Damn. look around the corner here and take a shot I'm gonna go prone as well avoid being a bigger target now we know standing that they're by. here so I'm gonna have Fidel let's see that's seven points we got 21 so you can run here pretty safely you can take five to shoot you can see here if you hover over this uh, the I think it's zero means it's uh, it's the, the in parentheses it says AP zero I think that's the how much AP it takes to draw the weapon then the next one is the first shot and then there's more for like um, I think it's auto fire that you yeah you toggle first and auto fire with, fire with B it's again something that you'll just need to figure out or maybe look here and notice the burst mode button but yeah we're gonna have fidel here i'm gonna make him go prone that should leave him with enough points get a decent targeted shot he missed though and see here you can see that he, he sees one enemy i think if you yeah if you click on him you, you'll see it highlights there if you if you're not there it sort of scrolls the map around and uh, highlights the enemy. So if you don't know what they see, you can sort of ask the game. The territory. Usually it's a good idea to have more than one guy uh, attacking an enemy. Uh, having Standing bullets by. fly around them is going to make them a bit more scared. And they're going to be Good. Everyone's busy there placed in the netherworld. instead of being instead of being able to to keep you busy with multiple targets shooting at you so now we we dealt with this place make sure you save often so alt s is quick save uh there is another option here for save game but it's a bit clumsy read that email uh definitely it's probably important i'm not gonna do it right now because i Standing by. need to now What's your main there? character is gonna have this letter uh from enrico it's part of the story that you should know by now if you've been following what I said. Gotcha. That you should uh, you should read the emails and things like that. There is going to be a person called Fatima here. Why are you here? Who's interested in why you're here? How could it be that you were sent by Enrico? He has been dead for more than ten years. These options are standard, so come again. Just repeats what they just said. Friendly is well, you being friendly, direct being direct at them, threaten is also rather obvious and then there's give and recruit you want me to believe that you are working for a dead man i would suggest that you leave omerta before you yourself become one all right so she's not convinced by our words alone so we uh talk to her give her this letter that is gonna prove that enrico mm. sent us a letter from enrico chivaldori he has not forgotten us. Very few people are aware that he's alive. As far as most of the people in Auruko are concerned, he was murdered over a decade ago. We had given up hope of ever hearing from Enrico again. Who would believe that someone living in the comforts of exile would care about this dismal country? Very well then. Follow me. Do not make any quick moves. Miguel's men will be nervous. You do not wish to intimidate them. The Drana has brutally bombed and attacked us for over two straight months. So, that's how you progress with the story. Initially, make sure you, you understand it. Right-clicking on the portrait toggles the inventory mode. This brings you back here. Uh, clicking on this desk here is going to give you the option to travel around. Uh, initially, you should definitely follow Fatima. Just so you can... Can walk on the edge of the map uh, make sure you take your whole team use the plus key 
or or drag your reticle around them and walk uh with her and then bring everyone to the edge of the, the thing and and if you see that icon there it's gonna turn into one without the the the, the thing over it and now if you click on it there is an option to have selected mercs all mercs in the squad and then go to sector make sure you select all mercs in squad and go to sector when you can yeah. so standing by do it like this damn it standing by need to move these standing guys closer by. to each other before i can do this standing by so there we go all mercs in squad and now go to sector is always checked because there's no other option if you're all, all your guys are going to go there we're going to not do that standing right now by. because there's a few other things you need to know I what believe is there? there's a thing here. What's there? Okay, so the world is full of things. So there's a, a wire cutters. Yes. There's a crowbar here. Zero yeah. is strong, so we're gonna Agreed. want him to have this crowbar. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my cursor over the crowbar. If you wait long enough, it'll turn into a hand. But I press just the control key and it shows crowbar. Got it. And you pick it up. Similarly, the wire cutters are really useful Got things. It. The world is littered with things that you might want. So let me just quickly look around. If I could maybe find some good example of this. This place is bombed to hell, so it's not very like. Okay, here's uh, uh, some kitchen drawers and things. You can just click on them to, to open them. Similarly, the fridges might might be closed initially, or the cabinets. There's a lot of things here and there. They might have interesting things on them. It's not necessary, but it might help. You, get, you can find useful things around. Understood. So that's probably right, the so last really important piece of advice. Um, follow the game's sort of hints. It's going to tell you these people are going to talk to you. They're going to tell you what they want you to do. So uh, Fatima asked you to follow her. Follow her. Uh, the people... You're gonna meet after that. I'm gonna tell you other things. Do those things. And save often. The game can be really unfair at times, especially for a new player. Uh, make sure you save often, keep multiple save games, and um, make sure you you try to look at the, the sort of keyboard shortcuts and other help that the game provides for your you to to understand what you're doing wrong now one more thing is well actually you're eventually going to get email about it i guess it could even be here now no but uh, bobby race is eventually gonna uh, open up and you can buy stuff from here make sure you order it to the right airport otherwise it's gonna get lost and um what else is there anything else that is sort of important i don't think so I don't think so. I'm sure you'll figure it out. This this was probably like a quick rush through everything. So hopefully you'll forgive me. Um, I've got sort of little time for this and I thought I'd just whip it out. Whip it up together quickly. Anyway, let's, um, let's call it a video. Thanks again uh, for watching. I hope you learned something about the game. And uh, I hope you have a fun, fun time with Jagged Alliance 2. And let me know if you need more assistance.